o'clock. I'd like to call the uh, May 4th meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Mokal County to order. We'll rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Again, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Consideration of agenda items. Is there any additions or corrections? None, Mr. Chair. I entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Nagel. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Smalls. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Proclamation. Barrett Spores, kind enough to read the two proclamations thank you you're welcome good morning good morning national children's mental health awareness day is may 6th whereas addressing the complex mental health needs of children youth and families today is fundamental to the future of mcleod county whereas the need of for comprehensive coordinated mental health services for children youth young adults and families places upon our community a critical responsibility whereas it is appropriate that a day should be set up set apart each year for the direction of our thoughts toward the children's mental health and well-being. Whereas Pact for Families Collaborative, through its unique approach to serving children, youth, and young adults with mental health or substance use disorders, is effectively caring for the mental health needs of children, youth, young adults, and their families in our community. Now, therefore, I, Barrett Spores, on behalf of Doug Kruger, Chairperson of the McLeod County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim May 6, 2021 to be McLeod County Children's Mental Health Awareness Day and urge our citizens and all agencies and organizations interested in meeting every children's, child's mental health needs to unite on, this, on that day in the observance of such ex exercises as will acquaint the people of our community with the fundamental necessity of a year-round program for children, youth, and young adults with mental health or substance use and use disorders and their families. Mental Health Month 2021 is um, in May. Whereas mental health is essential to everyone's overall health and well-being, and whereas all Americans experience times of difficulty and stress in their lives, and whereas prevent prevention is an effective way to reduce the burden of mental health conditions, and whereas there is a strong research that animal companionship, human humor, spirituality, religion, recreation, social connections, and work-life balance can help all Americans protect their health and well-being. And whereas mental health conditions are real and prevalent in our nation, and whereas with effective treatment, those individuals with mental health and other chronic conditions can recover and lead full productive lives. And whereas each business, school, government agency, healthcare provider, organization, and citizen shares the burden of mental health problems and as a responsibility to promote mental wellness and so support prevention efforts. Therefore, I, Barrett Spores, on behalf of Chairman Doug Kruger of the McLeod County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim May 2021 as Mental Health Month in McLeod County. I call upon the citizens, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses and schools in McLeod County to recommit our community to increasing awareness and understanding of mental health, the steps our citizens can take to pre protect their mental health, and the need for appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental health conditions. Thank you, Barrett. Thank you. And my comment would be that um, it's real. I mean, you said it in the proclamation. It's real, and early detection is is probably our best. I came out of an era where where we didn't have any ways to do it. So I know you guys that work in that field are are very busy and very dedicated. So I appreciate that. Thank Thanks. you. Consent agenda. Any additions or corrections? Hearing none. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. A motion made by Commissioner Wright. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Luthens. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of the consent agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. COVID-19, Barrett. 
should have just stayed up here. <laughs> uh, so as of yesterday, May 3rd, uh, McLeod County has had a total of 4,158 positive cases of COVID-19 since the start of the pandemic. At our last board meeting on April, um, in April, I reported 3,964 positive cases, which is an increase of 194 cases in the last two weeks. Uh, we have currently have had 58 COVID-19 related deaths since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, again, I encourage everyone to um, look at McLeod County's website for more statistics or information uh, that is updated on a regular basis. Uh, our local public health has held a total of 37 vaccine clinics to date and administered 4,836 first doses and 2,928 second doses for a total of 7,791 doses administered. We have two vaccination clinics planned for this week, uh, Thursday and Friday. Uh, we are beginning to talk about um, demobilizing those clinics. Um, we're just seeing less interest um, a uh, number of the populations have just been saturated with vaccines. We're not the only option they can go to. They can go to their health care provider or, or a pharmacy, and, and we're seeing that people are, who are interested in getting uh, vaccinated are doing so. Uh, the governor's office has recently eliminated the requirement um, of getting doses administered within 72 hours, which has been helpful uh, just because we are seeing less people um, wanting to get vaccinated at this time. So the goal of um, getting doses administered within seven days of receipt of the vaccine is still in place and McLeod County is at 100% of that goal. 41% uh, of people in McLeod County have received their first dose and 33% have received both doses. So still some um, work to do there and we will continue to vaccinate as long as people are interested. Any questions? I do have. I have one. Uh, the clinics are. Are you going to keep the clinics open until everybody has their second dose that you administered the first? Absolutely. Dose? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I have noticed as well that that uh, people have. It, you know, it's 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 winding down to where people are. You're having a hard time getting all the doses put out in a day now. Is there is there any way to break that stigma? Uh, I mean, it's going to have to saturate. Uh, and I have one that has that stigma, but I didn't want to die on that hill. I did what I had to do. My wife and I both have them, and I'm trying to uh, get into somewhat of a normal life, whatever that is, you know, go yeah. to the functions and still be s safe. But it's not 100%, and, and it has, it's going to take some time. Is, I mean, you have any comments on that? Well, our, our largest clinics have been second-dose clinics. Last Thursday and Friday, we did quite large clinics, over 400 on Thursday. So we will definitely continue to administer the second dose uh, as long as, um, you know, people are still coming back for that. Uh, we too have seen that there is stigma amongst certain populations. Um, we just continue to educate with the facts, um, be available for questions, um, you know, encourage people come in and, and uh, ask us about the vaccine and we'll, we'll help them through that process. But we're definitely seeing a, a slowdown in um, people who are interested. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, Nathan? Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Nathan. Uh, Barrett. Um, if a person was scheduled to uh, receive their second dose and they either forgot about it or failed to come in, um, is there an issue with them coming in and getting their second dose, um, let's say, at uh, future clinics? Yeah, great question. Thank you. Um, they can certainly call our office and we can get them rescheduled at a uh, future clinic. We would prefer that they be off schedule um, rather than not getting the second dose at all. We will accommodate and, and make sure that they get that second dose. Thank you. Any other questions for Baron? Thank you, have Thank a great you. day. Yes, you too. Administration, Sheila, do you have? Good morning. Good morning. First, I'm going to give a little bit of an update on our QList system because that's pretty um, popular with some, not popular with others right now. In our, in our front lobby, if you've visited the government center within the last week or so, you've seen that we have a new check-in system for quite a few of our services. And I know that the commissioners have been receiving some phone calls. Um, I've been receiving some too, some, some good, some not good. And I just want to talk a little bit about that. 
when the pandemic hit, we had a trailer out at the North Complex to do a lot of our, our DVS services, our driver and vehicle services. So we were doing tabs and titles from there, or I shouldn't say we, because I never did, but our staff was. And it has been a really taxing time for them to deliver the services that they do and still follow social distancing guidelines. Because as we know, McLeod County has a pretty good um, DMV and a lot of people like to come here to get their services. And that doesn't just include people from McLeod County, but Carver County, um, even Scott County, Dakota County. <laughs> a lot of people coming from a far ways away, Meeker County, Renville, um, and, and a lot of the people that would maybe normally go to Hutchinson know that their walk-in services are not as open as ours right now, to the best of my knowledge, unless that's changed recently. So we've seen a lot of increased traffic from the other cities and counties. Um, we went to the system where those people could check in either in person by walking in with a screen that we're using or online from their telephone or their home computer. So we're learning that system. Some people are a bit frustrated with it. Some have given us very good compliments about it because they know when they're going to be helped and they don't have to sit here and wait a very long time. But we, still we are still continuing to take walk-in appointments. And this is all a result of the pandemic, like a lot of other things right now. So I just ask that people try and be supportive with patients for that system while we get through it. Um, we have seen our customer service team up there saying some really good compliments about it, such as, I think it's great to see the customers getting faster service. It is more convenient. Um, we changed so that there's a property tax line. So right now, of course, a lot of our, our public are paying their property taxes. If they come in, we have a separate line for that and it is rather quick. There's also a separate line for paying for their um, vehicle tabs and that is rather quick as well. So that's that. Any questions about QLIS? Anyone from the board? Mm -hmm. Thank you for the update. Thank you. And thank you for taking calls. You can pass them on to us if you ever want to as well. Then the American Rescue Plan fund update. We've been talking about this now the last few meetings. I was really hoping we would be further along. I talked to Matt Hilgart from Association of Minnesota Counties yesterday. We are still not further along. We still have not received our payment. Um, I'm just going to go over an update. We've remained in contact with Association of Minnesota Counties and other counties in Minnesota regarding the American Rescue Plans that we discussed at our last few meetings. The U.S. Department of Treasury, unfortunately, has still not provided updated guidance for fund usage. As discussed, as discussed prior, it was expected they would deliver updated fund guidance last week. Since updates have not been provided, the webinars scheduled for learning about that this week by the Association of Counties and the League of Minnesota Cities have been postponed until further notice. Recall that last meeting I told you we are required to receive our funds within 60 days of the bill being signed. The bill was signed on March 11th, so you can do the math there. Looks like we should be getting those funds soon. No counties or other municipalities have reported receiving funds to the best of our knowledge. For the next step, um, Matt and I discussed this yesterday. We'd like to arrange another meeting with our cities and townships like we did with the CARES funding last year. So that's what I would ask you to consider now. Um, since fund guidance is not complete, staff have recommended using meeting times to discuss the broad topics about what the confirmed eligible uses are, what the communities are in need of, what communities are missing, areas we don't want to duplicate efforts or waste resources, and assessing areas for possible collaboration of use of those dollars. We know that these dollars are gonna be in use through the end of 2024, so it's quite a bit different from the timelines that we've had for using other funds. And the intended usage is quite a bit different as well with infrastructure and other areas being approved. Um, so if you would like to consider that, we had a meeting at the fairgrounds when we did the CARES funding um, so that we can help our cities and townships that are receiving funds too, and I would like to to address that with them. Uh, is that something that we need to do a board action on or can we just? It is not, just to think about and talk about. And um, I know that a lot of them are confused too because they're not getting updates either, so. I would agree sooner than later to, <clears throat> to see who uh, is what, but farming is just about caught up, so. You know, I think it's definitely something that to get started with. It went over very well last time, and McLeod County was recognized for our efforts and how that program was put together. So I think we just stay the same plan that we had before uh, because of its outstanding success and, and uh, set that meeting time up. So, Thank you. 
Um, Commissioner Wright knows that the Association of Minnesota Counties actually used McLeod County's handling of the CARES dollars as a, an example for other counties throughout the state. And that I think was just a couple of weeks ago. So that's a, a big compliment and we should probably keep that communication line open. So thank you. I don't have anything else unless you have questions. I don't, just let's move forward. I, it's a good idea to, from, if we reactivate the committee to get everybody familiar with that committee and, and if anybody has any issues with that, they can bring them up at that time with the different cities if want more participation or less. But no, I think it's great. Great. And just a note that our intention of meeting last time was to share information that we received. We know that a lot of those municipalities are smaller than we are and maybe, maybe don't have full-time staff. It is not to make it so we have to collaborate, but also just to share information. Excuse me, and I don't know, I did have a question or two last week about, are, are the monies already designated to the townships and the cities that they have their amounts? Or I don't know that I have seen that list. I know what we're getting, but. We don't actually know for sure what we're getting. The okay. U.S. Department of Treasury hasn't confirmed anyone's amounts unless that changed since I spoke to him last a couple days ago. Okay. Um, we are supposed to get around 6.9 million, but they mm. still need to confirm and send the final amounts. Sure. So they should know an estimate, yes. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Environmental services, Mark. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, gentlemen. Two items this morning for you. First item is to consider approval of the McLeod County Material Recovery Facility MRF contract, operation service contract with West Central Sanitation out of Wilmer, Minnesota for a period from May 20th, 2021 to May 19th, 2022. This is a one-year renewal option from the original contract, which was approved May 2019. Rates will remain the same as the prior years, 2019 and 20. And as stated there, we are charged 45.35 a ton for processing of the commingled recyclables with a minimum yearly tonnage of 7,000 per ton. And we are charged 31.50 per ton for process source separated recyclables. All source separated tonnage counts towards the 7,000 minimum. With that being said, things are going very well with that contract. So with that, I'll turn it back to the board. Thank you, Mark. Um, questions from the board. I I'm a little more familiar, I think Paul is as well, but um, do you have any comments, Paul? No, other than that, I think our relationship with uh, West Central Sanitation has been outstanding over the past several years and, and has helped us become very successful with our, our program in the county, uh, as well as being able to offer that as a revenue maker to uh, other counties and entities around us. So I, I see no reason why we would not um, approve this, so I'll make that motion to approve. And I'll second it. Motion has been made by Commissioner Wright and seconded by Commissioner Nagel. Um, is there any more discussion? We've came a long ways, huh? We have. In a short time. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mark, for your leadership in that. Yeah, if I may add one more. We do, with the original contract, there were two one-year options for renewals. So this is your first, if, if the, this passes, this is your first one-year renewal. We do have that right to bring one more back. And again, we would typically sit down with West Central early part of 2022 and see how things are going before we brought that back in front of you. Now we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. So item B is consider conditional use permit 21-02 requested by Dave Berg representing Sunshare Community Solar, Denver, Colorado for the essential service of electrical generation through solar panels of a one megawatt community solar garden array system to be known as Buffalo Sun LLC on property owned by Donald Engelman. The solar garden would be interconnected to an Xcel Energy substation for distribution. The applicant has negotiated a 20-acre lease agreement with the property owner. The lifetime of this solar garden per the project submitted is estimated at 35 plus years. Soils are described as prime farmland per the McLeod County Soil Survey. This prime farmland has a Minnesota Crop Production Index CPI ranging from 87 to 91, which indicates higher productive potential. This property is zoned agricultural, and as a typo on this, it is located in that part of the southwest quarter, south of County Road 3, southwest quarter of Section 1, Helen Township. The Helen Township Board recommended approval at their February 11th, 2021 meeting. The McLeod County Planning Commission recommended denial at their February 24th, 2021 meeting due to the following findings of fact, A, prime farmland, and B, stray voltage. With that being said, Mr. Berg is present. Um, 
This was intended to go on the March 16th County Board agenda, but Mr. Berg asked for that to be moved to May 4th. Um, and I think he'll present some of what he was working on at that time. And he has signed an indefinite waiver for the 60 day rule. So we are good with that. So with that, if I may, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Berg and he can go through his um, addendum. Good morning. Good morning, how are you doing? Pretty good. Good. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, as you uh, are aware, you've seen uh, plenty of these uh, applications before. Um, and um, ours is very similar to the other ones, except for one difference. Um, we understand that, uh, that um, the importance of prime, preserving prime ag land in um, McLeod County, and that has been a concern, and um, uh, it's been a part of the reason for denial for these uh, applications. Um, we are aware of that we're, we have uh, um, we have uh, a plan to uh, continue to ag use uh, to use that, the land for ag, um, uh, working in conjunction with um, Tangletown uh, Gardens and uh, Ames Farms. We put together a plan uh, that would continue to um, uh, keep the land in. Um, ag use, which is important to the county. So I believe, um, Mark, did you, um, okay, it's up there. We did create uh, a site plan that would show how we would use this land. Um, so it's on the, oh, gotcha. Uh, that's an example of what, uh, so what we're introducing is called, the concept's called agrovoltaics. And agrovoltaics is a combination of solar and ag um, use. And this is an example of a project out in Massachusetts. So uh, if you keep going. Um, that's, a, that's our plan right there. So. Uh, our plan would be to uh, use the fence line um, in conjunction with Tangletown Garden. We talked about um, there is a, the potential of, uh, of um, uh, planting uh, using beds between the arrays. So there's roughly 1.3 tillable acres that we'd use between the arrays. Uh, the fence line is roughly uh, a little over 2,000 acres, linear feet, or I'm sorry, not acres, but 2,000 linear feet uh, where we could um, 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 plant uh, climbing uh, vegetation. Uh, we'd also use the uh, other area, open area for uh, native species and pollinators um, to help with, um, you know, the the, um, the crisis with pollination, the pollinators right now. So um, I've also uh, invited uh, Dean Engelman, who is owner of uh, Tangletown Nurse uh, Gardens and Brian Fredrickson with Ames Gardens to help speak a little bit more about this um, if you have any questions. I don't right now until I hear from Dean. <clears throat> I've read through it, so. Pardon me? I've read through the proposal, so. Okay. Well, they're here, let's hear from them. Is, is, that's what I'm, as Dean, if Dean wants to, do you have something, Dean? <clears throat> well, um, there's no other questions just regarding the proposal as far as we we'd use the land, um, using the fence line, using the, um, um, the rays. We bring chickens in to help forage the beds um, to create uh, um, their, their droppings will also create fertilization um, for, the, um, for the beds. Um, the unused space, like I said, we planted native grasses. Um, Positive benefits on this would be uh, it provide employment for the garden, for the nursery. Um, we'd sell fresh local grown produce, flowers, uh, um, et cetera, to local markets. Uh, we'd encourage farm to, this would encourage farm to table practices. Um, so our plan ultimately would keep prime farm land and ag use. It creates jobs. It produces fresh locally grown vegetables. It supports Tangletown Gardens from the table farm to table practices, the CSA and farm direct programs. It produces clean energy, produces pollinator friendly habitat and creates a space for the beehives. 
I guess I, I do have a comment. Uh, any questions from the board? <clears throat> I guess uh, before he steps aside, I do have one, but we go ahead with anything else. Well, I, I read through it, and I and I did not, I seen it, and later, and obviously we've had a lot of solar um, applications. Um, this one kind of excites me, but uh, we still have to work around mm -hmm. the ordinance that we have in place. I mean, whether we amend it. Or in these, this is coming from me now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, but this, there's a lot of good things in there. I'm a pollinator guy, and I and I can see where that would really create a, an area for for safe pollinators. But mm -hmm. um, I, I'm I'm actually excited about it personally. But again, it I think it takes an amendment to the to the uh, 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 existing ordinance. I mean, we are bound to somewhat uphold that ordinance, and I, and I think this is very. In my opinion, it's very well worth looking at to change that ordinance. So I, that's my comment. Anybody else can sure join in. I'm, and I don't. I, I just my packet is the first time I'd seen it. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I might have to stop out and see Mr. Engelman again and see. I mean, I, I'm pretty impressed with their operation anyway. And if that helps them and helps us find, um, I don't want to call it happy medium, but something but i think it takes uh, i think we then have to tweak the ordinance to make it fair for for everybody right well <clears throat> i know one of the major concerns has been taking prime uh, farmland out of uh, production and with this plan um, it would keep uh, the land in production and uh, in conjunction produce solar and so that's what's exciting to us about it too it also is um, it'd be the first uh, site in the state and the surrounding states. There's another project out in uh, Colorado, Longmont, Colorado. It's called Jack Solar Garden, where they do this. So it's a relatively uh, new process, but I believe this site is, is, a, is a perfect um, um, starting point. Um, Dean and I have sat down several times and gone through um, the space that's available. Now, obviously, it's prime farm land, so that uh, would help with uh, the potential for uh, good growth. Um, we'd have water on site, uh, so he went, so we'd be able to irrigate. Um, it, it's it's a neat opportunity, and we're excited um, as we uh, keep on uh, researching, and exploring, and having discussion with uh, with Dean and with the uh, beekeepers. And I see you signed a 60-day, uh, according to my information, you signed a 60-day waiver. So I mean, I I I don't. <coughs> I would like to see it go back and revisit it. I don't like to approve something and then make the ordinance amended to fit you. I think we should do the ordinance within, you know, work together and get an ordinance that works for everyone. Mr. That's Chair, just, if that's I may, me. The, the ordinance says to, to preserve ag land for ag purposes is, is the part that isn't specifically stated. If you make a finding that this is keeping the land in, in egg production, you're, you're in co compliance with your ordinance. I, I, I thank you, and I, I am thinking of that, but again, it um, it's not going to use the full, say, in 20 acres. I mean, i just like to see some of this hard-to-farm thing co combined within there. I, I can see this excites me. I mean, I, I think we can um, work together to do something. Again, it's just me. That's my opinion. Mr. So Chair. I, go ahead. Uh, Mark, did the Planning Commission know about this when they saw it? They did not. They did not. This was, an, this was an addendum that Mr. Berg, after the Planning Commission recommended their findings, he asked for us to prolong this. Sure. I believe he was in the process of working with Angleton at that time, and then this addendum came forward. So from a staff standpoint, yeah, I agree with that 100%. If there is some concern in regards to the addendum, not in a negative way, but in a positive way, I think, you know, past practice, we could send that back to the Planning Commission to entertain this. Before. Well, this is very positive to me, personally. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and uh, there's been no secret, I've probably been the commissioner on the fence the most about these types of things. But this is really, thank you for finding a way to give us some options here. So We've also been in um, contact with the University of Minnesota too. I mean, they've done some research on this more um, in regards to dairy farm, um, but they do have some interest. I mean, it's just initial conversation. So um, it's, they just responded to me the other day. So um, I'm very interested to have them also be a part of this conversation. The question on uh, item B that came back from the 
Planning Commission on straight voltage. That's a phrase that gets abused quite often, uh, in my opinion. Anything that gets plugged into the wall can generate uh, issues with that. Um, I didn't see that necessarily addressed in your plan. Maybe I missed it. Um, but uh, how would you address uh, being, you know, uh, um, testing beforehand, testing after, and transparency with the county, what those test results are? Sure. Um, good question. Uh, we, we have a site down in uh, Wabasha County that we have testing. So what we do is we come in before we build, and we do a baseline. So we see if there is anything there. And then um, I don't remember the... Uh, the setup we have with them, but we, we do test uh, on a yearly basis with them. So, and that's typically been a part of our condition. Okay. Very good. I know it's, it's overused and abused, that topic, so. It is. I mean, I, I, I am not aware of any instances where stray voltage has, has um, been an issue. Um, I know, I think it was brought up at a prior board meeting, and, uh, but I am not aware of any, of, uh, of any stray voltage issues. Well, as a livestock farmer, it's a very sensitive issue. But I I'm understand. Not nail it down on these things at all uh, right. for that. Uh, it just needs to be tested. That's all. So yep. Thank you. I'm I'm actually eager to hear uh, the other two that, with their alternative farming practices that they would have. So. Well, <laughs> I, yeah. Um, you know, Dean's Dean been a. Uh, uh, everybody involved has been um, positive towards this, and uh, as, the more we've gotten into this, the, the more excited I've become, and. Uh, I think I was a little bit nervous to come and try to actually uh, present, and I don't think, I know I was a little nervous to come and present this, but I, uh, um, as my uh, time with uh, these, these gentlemen have gone on, I've gotten more and more excited about how we can work with the county uh, to show that we do um, respect uh, the, um, you know, preserving ag land um, and how these can work together. Well, I know, if, I mean, from my personal experience, and obviously I'm prejudiced because they're in my district, but if anybody can do it, <laughs> Them guys can do it, and I, I mean, there's nothing to be scared of. I, it's, it's quite, I mean, looking through it for me was, it, it, it's exciting to see something like that work or, you know, share, share different goals. So. Well, one of the things we looked into, which my office was really excited about, was growing uh, grapes for wine. And Dean actually turned me down to it, he, away from me, he said, you know, it's just, the wine's not that good. So, uh, <laughs> but. Well, we'll have to see. <laughs> so I hope there's no people, uh, folks in winery here. But uh, um, so that doesn't mean we might not try it at some point. So, Mr. Chair, go ahead, Nathan. If I could ask David a question, mm -hmm. um, uh, Dave, I, I saw that uh, your lease is for 20 acres. Um, mm -hmm. The normal footprint of a, uh, a a one megawatt solar is seven to 10 acres. Let's say, uh, why the 20 acre lease? Well, what I find is that when we have um, uh, a larger footprint, it just gives us more flexibility as far as where we're going to put our project. And so if I don't, I, I give myself a little bit more um, space for, for grace if we you know, need to reconfigure uh, uh, orientation of the project. And then, Mr. <coughs> Chair, um, follow-up question. Um, <coughs> I, I'm I in a comment. I'm excited with the proposal as well, but at the same time, I, I wonder if the proper way to handle it would be to send it back to the Planning and Zoning Commission so that you know they uh, can review. Um, the comment I, I just wanted to make that uh, I'm really happy that uh, Tangletown is involved with the proposal, and I just want to make sure that we're making you know doing the right steps and making uh, good decisions as we approach. Uh, approach these uh, applications. Mr. Chair, Mark, yeah. when is the next meeting of the Planning Commission? May 26th. So then it would be back here the first? Early June. The 3rd of June? Early June. Okay. Is that is that a timeline you can work with or not? Or would you like it sooner? I mean, that, obviously, <laughs> you, you probably want it yesterday, but I, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do I say I'm going to be on vacation May 26th? <laughs> My 20 year, 20, well, celebrating our 20 year anniversary a year late. Yeah, one of them. Does that sway anybody? <laughs> the homewrecker, is that what you said? Yes, I agree. I would just like to see our planning committee, because if this works as well as it, the, I can see the excitement with you guys, and, and obviously I know Engelman's, and, and, I, and I think it'll work, but I'd like to make sure the guidelines are in order that if somebody else is uh, has an initiative of some kind like that would would do the same that type of thing and and we have that in place already mr chair 
Go Mark, ahead. is he allowed to attend that meeting virtually still or no? We don't at this time. Okay, thank you. Could we do it? We could, yes. We could definitely have him attend that virtually. If he's willing to do that. Well, but perhaps if, um, if the other farms want to attend instead. I mean, that is the added feature. If they want to explain what they're adding to this, then he doesn't really need to be there, in my opinion. Um, the addition is, is uh, how Tangled Helen and Ames Farms would, would use the property, so if they would attend that planning commission meeting, I'm in favor of this, no matter if we send it back or not. I'm just gonna be quite vocal on that, but um, uh, but uh, that would that would be a way that, that we could do this and he can have his vacation time, um, which is absolutely <laughs> fine. And that, not, that's absolutely fine to be able to do it that way. But I don't know what the scope of the project is in regards to the timeline. So May 26 isn't necessarily the day that it has to be sent back. We could send that back at the end of June, too, if that's better timing for him. You know, and again, then we're looking at a July county board meeting. One of the reasons that staff <coughs> recommend that if you're considering something contrary to the decision of the Planning Commission, then we should send it back because there are a number of findings as far as conditions that we would look to impose, I believe, through the staff report and what we've done in past cases, whereas we can mitigate some of the effects of what we were talking about earlier, one of them being straight voltage. So, Again, there is a number I'm of I'm sorry, items. Mark, they can't hear you online. Can you come in front of the podium? I oh, apologize. Sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Thank you. So with that being said, I mean if we were gonna if we were gonna entertain this addendum and it would change the outcome, then I would ask for it to be sent back to Planning Commission. If the recommendation is different, then obviously I believe there would be a number of conditions attached with that recommendation. So as part of that, I think Mr. Burke should be present there um, as the applicant because he would have to agree to those conditions prior to them coming forward to you. And if there was to be an earlier meeting, it, is there a, there's an added expense to that, is that correct? There is, right now our publications are for the 26th, so to change that because we do have a public hearing for that, we would have to add an additional meeting. We could do that. We could have an additional meeting if the members are available earlier. Um, maybe the third week of May, we could do that on a Wednesday. So even what you're telling us, even if we are ready to go, you're recommending going back to the Planning Commission to make sure that everything else, including the straight voltage, is ironed out before we approve. Yes, that is exactly right. So we could vet that and get those conditions in a sequential order back to you in the form of their recommendation. All right, so I'm, that makes sense. So if we move on, Mike, we could just make a motion to send it back to the Planning Commission, and then Mark could work out the date and time and, and the, how it happens. Yes. So moved. Second. Mo motion's been made by Commissioner Nagel and seconded by uh, Commissioner Smalls to uh, send it back to planning and let Mark set up a date that hopefully is feasible um, to work with all. Um, is there any more discussion on the motion? Here, here's another question too, which uh, we've actually been entertaining for other reasons, is that um, meeting is 9.30, correct, uh, in the morning? That's correct. And I could potentially um, make some adjustments with my flight. So um, I'm willing to do that too, if that, um, if that kind of keeps things on a path moving forward. I know I may, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. One second here. You guys can honestly work this off out offline and, sure. and figure that all out. And I don't want to be the county commissioner that caused a divorce. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, so. I'll tell her that. And I don't, <laughs> I don't think within the motion there's anything that would stop you from changing the date if you, if, if yeah, you need our time. To. Yeah, our time. Yeah, so, so I'm looking at May 19th is what I'm thinking. That Wednesday prior, we can pull our members. If we can get a quorum there, which I believe we can, then we should be able to entertain with this one item for that meeting because it's it's not necessarily it's a continuation of a public hearing we would re-notice the property owners in the area and send it out to the townships and i think we have enough time for to do that the the motion doesn't include any of those de details it's just send it back so you work that out and they can vote on their motion Thank you. Very well. that's, 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 that's kind of thinking outside the box is something that we should be 100 percent yep. working right with. i agree um, so let's find a way to get it done and get it back here and get it Approved. Proceed to vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.
Uh, thank you. Uh, but I do have one more question that I forgot to ask earlier. When you set the, uh, in, your, in your picture, you set, are them panels set higher than the normal? Or no. You're, you're able to work underneath them? Well, actually what it is is that we have a space between them about 15 feet. And so that would give us ample room for, um, for the, the garden folks to do what they need to do, but also give us room if we need to maintain, do some maintenance on the panels to do uh, the maintenance. And is that also then part of the reason for the 20 acres? Or, I mean, give you that space? No, the 20 acres really is, um, when I initially do, um, um, uh, when I prospect, I, I try to get more acreage um, just for uh, different configurations, because we have what's called the standard block design. And we can have a north-south uh, um, scenario or east-west scenario. And so, um, you know, we went back and forth on what would be the best scenario on something like this. And we just, uh, you know, um, the 20 acres just gives us flexibility where we're going to put stuff. So on, in particular, this, you know, this has got a setback uh, off of County Road 3, which is pretty extensive. And so this just gives us room. I don't have to go back to Mr. Engelman and say, hey, can I have another couple acres here, a couple acres there. And I... Some may think it's funny, but I'm I'm a real pollinator guy, and I, I mean bees are under attack. Or I mean between diseases and yeah. and sprays. So it that's I mean to be real frank, when I seen the pollinator thing, my my little antennas came right up. I, I yeah, and I've been told that, and and uh, Brian maybe may, can speak on this more than I can, but you know the site can handle a minimum of 16 hives, um, right. so potentially more, and each hive um, can produce 25 to 60 pounds of, uh, of honey. So, um, you know, we work with Minnesota Native Landscape and as a gift to me a couple of years ago, they sent me a bottle of honey and it didn't last very long. So I'm, I'm really excited about that component as well. Well, it's not, I mean, for some that laugh, just look at, look up the bees and look up pollinators. I mean, we can't live without them, but, right. I, but it's not just for the honey. So it's, it's a good deal. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Public Works, John. Good morning. Good morning. One item before you is to consider approval of an agreement with MnDOT, a cooperative construction agreement, and corresponding resolution for intersection lighting at Trunk Highway 7 and our county State at Highway 15. We've been working with MnDOT over the years, as you know, to light up various intersections. Um, this one's always been on our radar at Trunk Highway 7 and 15. Uh, similar to past agreements, MnDOT will pay for the initial construction cost of the system, and then the county is on the hook for monthly power and um, repair of LED luminaires and so forth. The LEDs uh, currently are running about probably 12 to 13 bucks a light per month, so this intersection will have two lights, so approximately $25 a month for their power costs. So the initial project cost is approximately $20,000 for MnDOT, so they definitely have the upfront um, money in the game. And then, like I said, like other agreements, we are on the hook for the power. Well, we're, it's kind of long overdue, John. I'm, I'm, I, if we get this in, I don't know, I got a weekly or monthly phone calls that I get on that. Yeah, it was, they'll go away. It's, <laughs> it's, we finally, yeah, they've, they have a new um, local project program money that they've set aside for it, mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. And now 15 to... is done, so, yeah, yeah. no, it'd be great. Mr. Chair, move to approve. Motion made by uh, Commissioner Small, is there a second? Second. Second and by Commissioner Luthens. Any more discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Just a quick update on our uh, maintenance overlays on County Road 5 and County Road 16 with Dunnick that were postponed last fall. They plan on starting on those on Monday. So we'll be getting a news release out later today for that. Concrete paving on our projects that were previously awarded sounds like it's gonna be in uh, late May starting. So look for a, a news release on that as well. Late Thank May you. on County Road on County Road, County Road 3, 2, and 15. Okay. Yep. And, uh, do you want to just comment uh, short on where we're going this afternoon, just as long as you're up there? Sure. So uh, this afternoon, Carver County is hosting a groundbreaking for their first phase of the of the remaining two gaps on 212, the, the east phase project. So at 1 o'clock, they're having a groundbreaking over by bond guards. A uh, number of uh, state and federal dignitaries coming to speak on it, as well as a number of uh, local commissioners and members along the coalition up and down. So it's pretty exciting, I think, to get the, the start on the last gap project or the last of the two gaps going. 
John, where did they find the extra funding for that East Gap? The East Gap, well, there's a big savings with their, with the, um, with the bids. They came in and um, 10, 15 million dollars under their estimate, which they're trying to hope to move to the other one. But um, I think they came back with some more federal grant for more um, in for a build money. I believe there's a little local money. Put Carver's put in a large chunk of their uh, local option sales tax to the project as well. You bet. Yeah. And Mendet, I think, has stepped up with some of their um, the Met Council money. Or they're they're in the Metro money, so it's a, a different pot, but they come with some more too. So that it's I mean, there's it's it's really exciting as well right now because if we can if we can move some of that money that that's being saved on phase one into phase two, we could get a really jump start. I mean, there's some exciting news out yeah. there if we can get all, everything put together. Yeah, that's, that's I know um, Carver and the coalition are, you know, pushing men that hard for that because it's a different color of money because it wasn't on that project and right. there's a bunch of hoops to jump through with it, but yeah, they're trying to. They're um, really looking hard at yeah. the outside, I mean, out of the met, uh, metropolitan counties to, for the support and and uh, I think we've got a good response out here of getting getting to your, legis your elected officials to you know, to show the need economically uh, to, to get this road done. Yep. John, what's the length of time of the project? The project starts now, uh, there, I believe it was a two year project for phase one for this first East Gap. And then and they're starting design right now actually on the West Gap. And they're hopefully programming that for, I wanted to say 2025 or six, I think. Yeah, Assuming they get the remaining If everything funding. could go good, you could actually get started a little sooner. I've heard some sooner dates. It depends on what happens to this money. Sure. And then to, to Mr. Young's point there, they're working on number five as well, so you're going to have a hard time getting in. I mean, it's kind of Carver's working that together around the Arboretum, Arboretum. for that. Bond. It's, it's quite <clears> exciting. <throat> it's a lot of money, but it's well-needed stuff on the west side, that area that's been yeah. neglected for years. So. I'll forward the PowerPoint from the coalition meeting on Friday to you folks too. Okay. Mr. Chair, I think there's two guys in the room that have been working pretty hard on this, and that would be John through his uh, engineering circuits, but of course, uh, uh, Chairman Kruger, uh, you're, I think this is on your mind every day for years. Huh. So uh, uh, thank you and congratulations to be able to be to this point. Um, this is a big, a big deal for us. I won't be able to join you this afternoon. I got another appointment, but uh, uh, thanks for that dedication uh, to, to get this far. Thank you. Is it with Mr. Deer? <laughs> What's that? Is it with Mr. Deer? Close. Wrong color, but we'll take that same line. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs> Employee relations, Hannah. Good morning, Hannah. Hi, good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I just have one uh, item today. Uh, consider approval to temporarily increase the, the current child support officer's hours from 20 to 40 hours until October 1st, 2021. This is due to a recent part-time employee's resignation, uh, and this increase will be a budget neutral. So moved, Mr. Chair. Motion made by Commissioner Nagel to approve. Is there a second? Second that. Seconded by Commissioner Wright. Uh, any more discussion or questions for Hannah? Hearing none, uh, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Young. This next item is a contract th with the state of Minnesota through the uh, McLeod County Law li Library. Uh, they have their own funding system that is th through the criminal justice system, sur surcharges and things of that sort. Um, the current balance in that account is between 190 dollars and $200,000. This contract is up to $2,000 with the state of Minnesota. Uh, they, they provide program assistance, make recommendations to us, make sure we have the right kind of computer program in there and th things of that sort. So I would recommend that, th that this be approved by the board. The members of the Law Light Library Committee are Commissioner Nagel, my, myself, Judge Winters, Judge Maher, and then uh, staff is the court administrator. Mr. Chair, I'm going to approve. Motion made by Commissioner Nagel to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Smalls. Any more discussion or questions for Mike? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Mike. <sighs> County administration, calendars. Uh, Commissioner Luthens. Thank you. 
Um, go back to April 20th, our workshop that day, the 21st and Wednesday, AMC, that was a Zoom meeting. April 27th on a Tuesday, Health and Human Services, Zoom meeting that day. Wednesday, um, Planning Advisory Commission, um, Mark Teletsky. 29th and Thursday, Trailblazer or Orientation, two hour orientation meeting. And then yesterday, Monday, MRC, another Zoom meeting. Thank you. Okay, after our last board meeting, attended the workshop as well as uh, uh, interviewed for the open uh, position on the Buffalo Creek Watershed Board, and we'll see the results of that uh, shortly. Uh, 21st, also Hutchinson Joint Planning Board met. Um, 22nd, uh, Joint Ditch Meeting in Sibley County on uh, Judicial Ditch Number 18 and its, its uh, other ditches that lead into it. Um, I had to correct uh, a redetermination error and also had a discussion on uh, combining those ditches and, and I don't know if we'll go any further with that ditch com combining uh, process or not. Um, and then also the Health and Human Services last week. That's it. All right, for myself, um, I, some were covered, uh, the after board workshop. Um, I, I met with uh, Mayor of Glencoe, uh, uh, our administrator and myself went through, uh, went through the uh, new government center um, with uh, Mayor Voss. And uh, uh, he was um, speaking, uh, he sure acted impressed anyway. And we talked about, uh, <clears throat> we talked about um, different joint needs that uh, the city and, and the county could work on. And so I, I thought that was very beneficial, at least to start with. Uh, also had the JD 18, uh, 17, 32, 65 meeting in, in Gaylord. Uh, had the Health and Human Services uh, Community Health Board meeting. Um, I did also on the 27th um, attend the Buffalo Creek Watershed meeting. And uh, I attend them on a regular basis. And I, this one concerns me somewhat. I spoke that day of it. Um, they got three big improvements going, improvements, let me underline that, uh, going up west. One of them has even a 30 inch outlet. And uh, I mean, they're in the business of farming up there and they're in the business of tiling. But um, I spoke to the point where we're gonna have to find, so we can't take this water at the speed it's coming here, my opinion. I, I have a mile of Buffalo Creek couple inches of rain it goes it, it's right up to the top three four it goes out of the banks and there's ways out there it's not going to be easy but there's ways that we can work through this and um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little set back all three projects coming at the same time there's really measurable effects of what this is going to do there ha there's going to be some hearings you can go on the Buffalo Creek website I don't have the dates in front of me of um, of when these hearings are and later in uh, in May, they're at the uh, uh, government center or the courthouse in Renville County. Um, they're spacing them. They're farmers, so they're trying to space them so they can be attended. But I'm not so sure that uh, our input at least should be noted. Uh, that's all I really have on that. And on the 28th, uh, I had HRA meetings. Um, uh, pretty much uh, normal things. We have. Uh, some work to do up along Morningside on 14th Street with a, a ditch there. We're looking into, uh, now that Morningside's going through there, there's a growing up of trees and try to work together with the city or who, the powers that be to, to, to straighten that up and, and make it look better and also make it function better. It's actually a ditch that runs into the wetland. On, uh, also on the 28th, I had um, High Island Rush River uh, Joint Powers Board meeting. It was a coalition that was created a number of years ago for um, uh, basically for uh, 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 soil health and, uh, and, and drainage and farm pollutants and whatnot all going into the river and we now it's being pretty much encompassed by one watershed one plan and, and the, uh, same people at the table uh, I think there's a better high island board as well I, I think we got the same people at the table we weren't actually do, not doing anything so we pr had a meeting pretty much to to dissolve this joint powers board the, the papers are being sent to uh, Mr. Young's office for uh, to, for him to look at and we'll probably see him at the next board meeting 
Uh, I also attended the Trailblazer on the 29th. Uh, it, was, it was headed as a orientation, and it was I've been there a number of years now, and I, I we're going through the funding sources and how things are funded and, and, and what the data is based on, and I, I'm learning quite a bit from that as well, or how to at least use it better. Uh, that afternoon I had agenda review, um, and then John covered the Southwest Coalition meeting that we had on Friday, pretty much entitled uh, the, the progress on, on Highway 212 and, and all the things that are going on uh, on county or state highway five, I mean it's it, it kind of comes together, especially for the people in in Carver County. And then uh, yesterday morning I had an MRC board meeting um, in there. Um, uh, all, uh, all the above was kind of talked about drainage, uh, electric cars, uh, uh, what the legislature is doing now, and, and we put out our nothing much has changed in. In our view, our recommendations to the legislature that brings us to today. Go ahead, John. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The workshop's been spoke about. Uh, also, the Buffalo Creek wa watershed um, interviews, uh, which we'll uh, see here in just a little bit. Law library meeting was discussed and approved. Thank you for that. Big one for me was the Southwest West Central meeting in Marshall. Um, a variety of topics were covered. Um, big thing that we deal with is insurance. I think at some point we'll have an update, right, Sheila, about it, not today, but uh, insurance, and I think it's pretty good news. Oh, today? Okay, um, so we can talk more about that today. So that's good. Um, some uh, administrative meetings regarding uh, county buildings, meeting with the assessor's office regarding a, a meeting that uh, I hope to host, or and everybody's invited, um, uh, commission, uh, as far as commissioners go regarding commercial uh, real estate taxes and, and, and how that looks and so that we have a little better information how we get to those numbers and then the health and human services meeting. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, since our last board meeting, uh, like the rest of us, I attended the workshop uh, following the meeting and then that evening I was invited to give a report of our county activities uh, in front of the Winston City Council uh, on the 21st, Wednesday, I had a uh, Zoom meeting, a public health advisory board early in the morning. The 22nd, Thursday um, afternoon, joint powers board insurance uh, committee meeting. And that evening, uh, followed, uh, followed up with a UCAP, United Community Action uh, Committee meeting by Zoom. And then uh, the following week, on the 27th, a uh, Health and Human Services Committee meeting that uh, I believe we all uh, participated in uh, in the morning. And that afternoon, I've had a CHS uh, meeting uh, by Zoom once again. And that Friday, a Central Minnesota Jobs and Training meeting um, that morning. And that brings me to uh, yesterday. I had a supporting hands uh, Nurse Family Partnership Board meeting um, in the morning by Zoom. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any news that you got out of the jobs and training, like what's going on locally, or did there, was there much discussed about that on, on availability of workers? Or <clears throat> Not specifically. Um, they're looking at what's happening in the legis legislature right now. I think that's where their main concern is and, and what might come or might not come out of legislature. So that was pretty much uh, what uh, the meeting uh, included. And that's encompassing a lot of the meetings right now is because the legislature Leg is, is winding down. So You are correct, you. Mr. Chair. I think uh, the legislature has kept us all uh, kind of busy to try and keep up with the reading and, uh, and what's happening in St. Paul. Okay. Thank you. Sheila? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have quite a few items today. Item A, consider adopting resolution 21-CB-18, authorizing Colleen Roback, finance director, to submit a proposal with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency for County Ditch 63 repair project with funds from the County Ditch number 63 budget. Move to approve. Second. 
Motions were made by Commissioner Wright and seconded by Commissioner Nagel to approve 21 CB 18 um, uh, for Ditch 63. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. We'll Chair, go ahead. Can you explain that to me? I thought that project wasn't gone through yet. I, I know I got some other information too on some interest money, but I'm, I'm, I'm Mike, you're close this to is the It's my understanding that, that this is a, an application to receive state funds to offset a part of the repair costs that are associated with the maintenance project that is on that ditch system. And those funds are, are available to reduce uh, sedimentation, to reduce uh, runoff from, from farm fields and things of that sort. Um, so it would be contingent upon the project go, going through. Is yeah. that the grants that Ryan was applying for? Yes, this yeah. is a zero percent interest funds from a pollution control agency. So we'd have that in our pocket if we, if we proceeded with the project. So it'd be a benefit to the landowners and ourselves to be able to have that um, low interest money to offer for the <clears> project costs. And it's these funds are first come, first serve. So. It's a small acreage with a, a, a quite steep price tag, so it helps at the time of the hearing to decide which way we're going to go. Yep. And I the believe grant, that the, the sorry, grant is only for this ditch. This one is, I believe. Yes. Thank you. you. Have to make a separate a application for each project. Yep. Thank, <clears throat> thank you. And it can't go back. From my information, you can't go backwards. It's all on. It's all on projects coming up. So it's a tool that. It's one of the things we've been talking about to, to get these tools out there and to make these um, this bonding or the money available at a cheaper interest rate. So we're assuming we're going to be doing this ditch. Preparing we, for we, it. We're preparing to, to do it. So If we don't do the ditch, then we don't get the money. Okay. Any other questions? Or hearing none, um, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Item B, when uh, when someone needs a credit card, we have to bring it in front of the county board. That's written into our policy. So item B is to consider approval to add a credit card for Barrett Spores, our Health and Human Services Director, with a $5,000 maximum credit line. Um, Barrett came to us during the pandemic. She hasn't needed to travel or anything of, this, of the sort, probably will need to do so soon for her work and training, and we want to prepare her for that. This these bills then come back to Colleen or to our accounting department to go through or who who actually show who goes double checks the every credit card is it goes through a, a rigorous process I would have to sign off on any purchases she made Very good. so over to approve motion made, by, motion made by Commissioner Nagel and seconded by Commissioner Lewisons any more discussion hearing none we'll proceed to vote all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed Motion carried. Thank you. Item C, consider approval to add a credit card for Peter Leeson, sentenced to serve crew leader with a $5,000 maximum credit line. Of course, Peter often is going to need to buy supplies for his crew, and it would be sensible for him to have a credit card in his name as well. Move to approve. Motion's been made by Commissioner Eisner, second? Second. Second by Commissioner Luthens. Uh, any, any more discussion on it? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item D, consider appointing Kevin Lindemann to the Buffalo Creek Watershed District Board of Managers for a three-year term commencing on May 18, 2021 and expiring on May 17, 2024. This appointment was advertised in the McLeod County Chronicle and on the McLeod County website from March 31 through April 15, 2021. Letters of interest were due to the McLeod County Administration Office by the end of April 15, 2021. The panel consisting of myself, McLeod County Administrator Sheila Murphy, Commissioner Paul Wright, and Commissioner Joe Nagel met with interested applicants. The panel recommends appointing Kevin, Lind Kevin Lindemann to this board to represent McLeod County, and Mr. Lindemann is here today if you have any questions for him. You sure? <laughs> Come on. So moved. <laughs> Second that. Sheila, a little closer to him, oh. please. Yeah, thanks. Can you just slip your mask for a second? Yep. Thank you. Good. I Gentlemen? think uh, 
Larry Phillips is stepping down, but it sounds like he's going to be on the advisory and stay on for a little bit because there are a bunch of projects coming up to the west. Like you said, I appreciate you being at the meetings because uh, I think there's going to be a, quite a few things for me to learn <laughs> on some of it. I do live on the creek down here in uh, Penn Township, and uh, we do experience a lot of water issues, and we kind of seem like it's our floodplain for them. But uh, we'll see how all the meetings go. I think, like you said, the hearings are coming up. I think they're all in June. Is it June? Or yes. I said May. I yeah, I think it's in June. They got a bunch of them scheduled. I didn't have the schedules for sure yet, but should but. be on the website on the Buffalo Creek website. Easy to get at. So, all right. Well, appreciate you considering me, and I'll do what I can. And well, we did I'll more than consider. We, we, <laughs> you're, you're one vote away. Here, so. <laughs> all right. Anything else? I don't like something. Yeah. All I'm, I, I guess I had asked for a motion to approve, uh, Mr. Lindemann. You already have one. I do? Yep, for me and Paul. Oh, okay. Yep. Is there any more discussion or questions for Kevin? Hearing none, uh, please vote. We'll proceed to vote. All in favor of appointing Mr. Lindemann to the Buffalo Creek Watershed Board, say aye. 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 Opposed? You got her. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. And I, after, with, with this particular three projects going in, I. Don't make a stranger if it works out. We we can talk, but I, I maybe wouldn't be the worst idea as a representative of of uh, the two of you guys that represent uh, McLeod County. It wouldn't hurt to come in maybe and and give us a talk, stay in a contact with Sheila because uh, it's a big deal. There's a lot more water coming in. We're kind of we'll stay in touch. Thank you for um, waiting for this today. He's been here the whole meeting. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Thank right. you very much. See you every day. Are we completed with the vote? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Item E, consider adopting resolution 21-CB-20, annual reappointment of Ryan Freitag from a Cloud County drainage inspector, which Ryan would normally be here, but he is out working. They got their tree planter fixed today, so. <laughs> I so move. Motion's been made to appoint Ryan as our ditch inspector. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Smalls. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of appointing Ryan, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item F, consider adopting resolution 21-CB-21, accepting American Rescue Plan funds and extending the appointment of the temporary committee members on the <clears throat> Coronavirus Relief Fund Committee through December 31, 2024. The board adopted resolution 20-CB-24 on December 29, 2020, extending CRF committee appointments through April 2021. McLeod County has been notified, of course, you've heard today, um, that we will more than likely be receiving $6.9 million in relief funds through the American Rescue Fund Plan, or American Rescue Plan funds. And the fund al allocations are not yet finalized, but will be dispersed in two equal tranches. So again, we should be receiving that 50% within a matter of days, and then within one year, we have to receive the remaining 50%. We have until December 31st, 2024 to spend those funds. McLeod County Finance Department has arranged to accept these funds when available. These funds will be received by the county through an electron electronic transfer of funds, which is why we're here today asking you to do it beforehand. Resolution 21-CB21, would authorize acceptance of these funds once available for disbursement, as well as extend the temporary CRF committee to oversee the distributions of the funds through December 31, 2024. So second. Made by Commissioner Nagel. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Luthens. Uh, any more discussion? We talked a little bit about it earlier, so um, <clears throat> hearing no more discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item G, consider approval of the Memorandum of Agreement with Minnesota Public Employers Association, MinP, Communications and Corrections Unit. I want to clarify because we have had a couple of questions sent to us um, about the MOA, the Memorandum of Agreement, that this was brought to us by the union. Um, and this is due to the pandemic ongoing and the schedules ongoing that have affected these units. 
to extend the vacation um, use that they have for their balances. This memorandum of agreement modifies their Article 15.3 vacation and sick leave by temporarily waiving limitations to maximum capacity of vacation of hours of vacation only. This memorandum of agreement supersedes the memorandum of agreement dated March 2020. Board, your wishes? So moved. Motion's been made by Commissioner Wright. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Nagel. Uh, any more discussion? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item H, similar but for the deputy unit, consider approval of the memorandum of agreement with Minnesota Public Employers Association, known as MINP, their deputy unit. This memorandum of agreement again modifies an article there's 15.4 vacation and sick leave by temporarily waiving limitations to maximum capacity of hours of vacation only. This memorandum of agreement supersedes the memora memorandum of agreement dated March 2020. Motion has been made by Commissioner Nagel to approve. Is there a second? Second. I'll second, okay, I'll second it. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item I, notification of board workshop to be held following the board meeting on May 18, 2021, here at the McLeod County Government Center, located at 520 Chandler Avenue North, Glencoe, Minnesota. That's it. Does, that doesn't take a board action the way no. I have. No. Are you completed or you have I am. I'm, you're at other. You can go, go to open forum. Sure. Sure. Are there anything, any input from, from the audience? Press relations, Karen, have you had anything? Thank you. So, I'll entertain a motion to recess till May 18th, 2021 at 9 a.m. at the McLeod County Government Center, 520 Chandler Avenue North, here in Glencoe. So moved. Motion's second. been made. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Luthen. All in favor say aye. 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 We're recessed. Thank you. Mr. Chair, can we start the workshop at um, 10, about 10.20? The sooner the better, yes. Thanks. Yeah. 